Thanks for watching. Today I've got my friend Jill with me and we're gonna make gluten-free gingerbread cookies with Frankie's all-purpose flour blend. So we've got flour, baking soda, cinnamon, sugar, shortening, salt, molasses, and water. Thanks for coming, Jill. You're very welcome. So what do we do first? We are going to cream our shortening and our sugar together. Okay, so let's put the shortening in there. And we'll put the sugar in there. And can you be the, uh, the master mixer? I certainly can try. Wonderful. Okay. Going up the side, so I think we should just scrape it. So scrape let's put the molasses in and then okay. we'll put the we'll scrape down the sides. Oh my goodness, that's messy. You're glad I'm doing that part? Yeah, sometimes it helps if you just spray like a little bit of Pam on the inside, oh, then it just slides right out. That's a handy hint. Yeah. So let's scrape the sides. Did I get everywhere? No, I missed there. There we go. Okay. Okay, so we'll mix that up. I love the smell of molasses. Oh, I know. Oh. So now let's add in our flour. So we'll lower that down. Dump our flour in. Oops, sorry. It's okay. And then our baking soda. And our cinnamon. Now could you add ginger if you wanted? Oh, absolutely. You okay. can do ginger and allspice. I just find, and a bit of salt, that the cinnamon is the dominant flavor. Yes. For sure. Um, do you want to add a bit of ginger in it or are you good? No, I'm fine with okay. this. Okay. And uh, let's add the water in. Why not? Okay. There. It's all in there. Okay, I'll start it off. Oh, do you want to scrape it first to get No, let's no? mix it okay. and then we can scrape later. Alrighty, I'll start it off slow then so that it all gets incorporated without flying everywhere. <laughs> I had a friend that did that. She was making um, fondant with marshmallow and icing sugar and she melted the marshmallows down got it in the mixer, and then she poured in all of her icing sugar, and turned the thing on high, and it went boof. Uh, yeah. Or the blender trick without putting the lid on. I've done that yeah. one, too. Oh, this is really coming together. I'm just gonna scrape down the sides again, just one more time, just to make okay. sure. Yeah, you scrape. Okay. Oh, that smells so good. Oh, doesn't it? And cinnamon is truly one of my favorite flavors. So. Yeah. Get it all down there. Get all the molasses off of the spatula. You don't want to waste any of the good stuff. No, that's there for sure. There we go. Oh, I love that. Okay. There we are. That looks wonderful. Yeah, I don't think it needs anything else, do you? No, I don't think so either. Okay, there we go. I think it could use maybe a little bit, bit more, more flour. flour. It looks a little bit wet. So let's just So do what that. consistency should it be? It should be a little bit M more because you're rolling it out, right? Yeah, you're rolling okay. it out. So you don't want it to be so sticky that, that yeah. It's just not manageable. That looks better already. Yeah, it does. Okay, perfect. So let's, because I can always add yeah, when you're rolling more it up, flour right? when we roll it. So we'll move that over. We're going to need room to roll out things. Oh, look at that. Doesn't that look good? It looks wonderful. Oh, it smells good. I've often thought, oh, wouldn't smell a vision be nice? Because when you're baking, it just. Yeah. And it's going to make the house smell wonderful. Yeah, that looks much better. Yeah. I find when you're baking gluten-free, it really depends on, um, a lot of the time, atmospheric pressure and how much humidity is in the air and how warm things are because you can make a loaf of bread one day and then do the exact same thing the next day and it, it might not work. Right. And it's a lot of it has to do with really environmental conditions that you really can't control. Yeah, we just had our first snowfall last night, so uh, there's a lot more moisture in the air right now. Oh yeah. Okay, so there's that. 
Let's add a bit more flour. Okay. It's nice and soft. What I like about baking with gluten-free, though, is unlike traditional wheat flour, you can knead this and knead it and knead it, and it's not going to get, get tough. tough. Oh, that's great. It's so nice. Because of the gluten, right? Yeah, there, there is none. Right. So you can see the uh, texture is, or the consistency is becoming more yes. what, what it should be. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I added that little bit Just extra. Just want to get the feel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this recipe, um, I don't believe you can use it to make gingerbread houses. Um, but I will, I will correct myself on, on the screen because I will look at the recipe a bit closer. Um, and if there is a gingerbread house recipe, it'll be very similar. It just will have slightly different ingredients. And I'll post the link to that in the description as well. So we're just going to lightly roll that out. Make sure we're not sticking. Because nothing's worse than taking your time and rolling out everything and making it look really nice and pretty. And how thick would you uh, roll it? About this thick. I mean, quarter, like a, a good quarter inch. Okay. Um, you don't want to go too thin because then you get... Yeah, really... Really thin things yeah. and, and they get... There we go. Okay, so we have a few different cutouts here. We have a teddy bear, we have a nice fun leaf. Um, can you guess what that one is? Um, we have a flower, and then we have a unicorn, which is quite fun. So just grab one and just start cutting them out. Now, however you position them on the board is however they're gonna bake. So if you wanna bake one with a head slightly twisted, and you can have them doing like a little pose. Oh, I didn't even think of that. And... Now, do they spread a lot? Not much. No. No, not much. And if they do, it's going to make a liar of me. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking these two are sort of touching. Yeah. So maybe if we smooth it down. It it's a really good. nice thickness. Um, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's it's the, the bears are really, they're, they're nice thicknesses yeah. of... There we go. So we can roll these up. Or we could just wrap this up in plastic wrap and we can use it for another day. And then... Just refrigerate it? Just refrigerate it. Or and could you freeze it? You could freeze it, absolutely. You refrigerate it. Just make sure it's fully thawed and, and warmed up to room temperature again before you roll it out again. Okay. And in the freezer, up to six months. In the fridge, about a week. And then, yeah, it's, it's good. Great. So we're going to bake these at um, 375 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes and we'll just pull them out and we'll take a look and then maybe we, we get to try them. That sounds like a plan. Okay, so let's put that in the oven. Wow, look at these guys. Oh, fresh from the oven. Oh my goodness. I mean, when I think of the holidays, I think of gingerbread cookies and Me too. festive treats and and I can't wait to decorate them and have the kids decorate and them. And if you could smell them guys, they are awesome. So check out the recipe, it's in the description below. Um, I look forward to reading all of your comments on whether you tried this and how it worked out and even some of the recipes that you'd like to try. If you like this video, remember to like or subscribe to the channel and thank you very much for joining You're me, You're so Jill. welcome, it's my pleasure. Especially when I get to sample everything after. Yes! Thank you.